Hey everybody, welcome back to the festival circuit. It feels good to say that we are back for season two and there's going to be a few upgrades hopefully for this season, including video. And I just want to say a very thank you to our guests who we'll be introducing shortly for sorting all of this out and uh, making it the best series yet. So I am joined, of course, by Ruben. How are we, guys? And we have a very, very special guest here today. You've probably seen his face all over it if you're into Reading and Leeds content. Uh, Jack Webb, introduce yourself. Howdy, guys. I'm Jack. I run a, a, a small channel on YouTube where we geek over a lots of artists. We've got a big <laughs> Reading Festival. Um, and uh, excited to check out this year's lineup and do more of that. For sure. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to, to diving into this. But first, Jack, we've got a question for you. We're going to start all of season two with our guests with an icebreaker question. So we're going to ask you for three people that you're going to take to a festival, what festival that is and who are your headliners. There's, a, there's three questions rolled into one. So who are you going to take, what festival, who are the headliners? Okay. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. First of all, that, well, it's got to be r and obviously. Um, yeah, for sure. <laughs> it's, it's just got to be. I mean, if, if, if the rules are not that, then I'm, I don't know what I'd do. Um, I'll probably make up a festival. Um, <laughs> headliners, oh, RL headliners, I think Rage probably being on there is, is actually one of those. I know that's a bit, uh, but it, they, were the first year, <laughs> they were there the first year I headlined and it was what, really special to see them. Um, I always thought that Block Party deserved to headline at one point in the world and they never did, so hey, it's my festival, Block Party headlining. <laughs> um, and I would, who else would I go for? Probably someone like Florence or Arcade Fire, maybe? Like someone a bit kind of... Have a co-headliner, Florence yeah. and Arcade Fire I mean, co-headliner. Florence, Florence and Arcade Fire co-headliner would be out of this world, so let's go with that. <laughs> There we go. And who are you taking? Um, three people. Um, I don't think I can go without taking Lauren, my girlfriend. Otherwise, she would dump me. Um, <laughs> my brother would probably fit into that camp as well. And then probably my best mate, Spokey, because he's always up for whatever I drag my along to. There we go. That's perfect. Um, so, Jack, just while we got you here today, I just thought I'd uh, get a little bit of your background. Obviously, you love the festival. You've been going for years and years. So just chat a little bit about how you started, when you started, and uh, why you love it so much. Yeah, sure. Um, See, so when I was a boy, no, I, um, my, uh, <laughs> my, my, my dad is like, I was always been really into music. So when I was a kid, I grew up in, um, we collected like CDs and stuff. So we always had a really versatile music was always on in the house so we, I was just obsessed with it and then when I got to like I don't know 13 we started going to gigs all the time in like Portsmouth, Southampton, Bournemouth areas um, and I was just all I never really was into the idea of a festival and what always more the idea of going to a gig because a gig is just for that artist so I just I put it off for years when all my buddies were going to like r and and Glastonbury and Homelands and all of the other kind of old festivals that there were back then they, uh, they were like, you'd love it. I don't know why you wouldn't, they like, don't want to go. Anyway, my godmother, like, had some r and tickets arrive on her door three weeks before Reading and Leeds 2008. And she said, do you just want to go for, like, here's your birthday present? <laughs> so I took my buddy Buster and we went and parked on the outskirts of Reading and walked in. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> it was a long, old walk. The, and and it, it, it was a long <laughs> walk. It was like... Um, so we, uh, yeah, we walked right on the, from the right on the outskirts because we were so poor and parked in. I think we could afford like one arena pint that year, but we just had the best time just going and, I don't know, this crazy, get a lot of like eight, 16 and 18 year olds together and all hell breaks loose and it just becomes great fun. And then I just became a bit obsessed like I do with a lot of things and <laughs> I'm back every year and I've been every year since 2008. Um, and in 2019, decided to start making a little bit more of that, putting more knowledge to test, and decided to make a video for every artist that played. So it's just <laughs> one of those things where it's just one more and more and more and more. And um, yeah, I love it. I, I go to, well, I don't just exclusively go to Reading Leeds, I've just been the last, oh, what is 14 years. But I, yeah. I love going to different festivals and gigs, and it's just what keeps me going in the world. Yeah, that's sick. I'm gonna I'm gonna put you on the spot a little bit because that's 14 years that you've covered. 
go on, talk to me. Sort of best best actually seen, worst actually seen, and favorite year altogether. Um, there there are standout years. There are standout years, and I think that I mean, the first years always was always going to be amazing. Uh, Rage Metallica Killers, it was always going to be great. Um, yeah. I remember specifically when I met. When I met Lauren, we, I, I bought her a, like a day ticket, and her, her and her mate came for the for the day, and then ended up staying for the weekend in 2012. So that was the Cure, maybe Green Day, and Cure Green Day, and what was it Green Day? I don't know, but it was like the Cure and the Maccabees were headlining on the Radio One stage and, and the main stage, and the Foo Fighters closed the whole weekend off, and it was. Oh, it was no, it wasn't. It was it Kasabian. Kasabian, it was Kasabian, wasn't it? In the middle on, yeah. on the Saturday, and they were fucking great. Um, <laughs> So yeah, that was a that was a really special year, and then I think this year just gone. I mean, twenty nineteen was really special because I knew every band that was playing, um, <laughs> yeah. and then and then this year just gone was really special with having that big gap. I had a really good crew, um, yeah. and I think that's half of it. I think for anyone that's like if you're going with people that you like, or you've got a good group of people that will just be up for going and seeing whatever, then you're going to have a great. Doesn't matter what festival you're at, you can have a great time. Mm. Yeah, it makes a difference, doesn't it? Definitely, definitely. Um, so yeah, probably headliners. Food, anytime Foo Fighters headline is just out of this world because it's Foo Fighters. Um, <laughs> but I think I think Rage are uh, just they're they're so much more than just a, another band. Like they're just outrageous, and I'm really excited for people to discover their music because they've not released anything in like 15 years, and I think they're gonna have a great time. Yeah, I think that's gonna be quite special, isn't it? Uh, when they return, and as I say, a lot of people, even sort of my age, might might. I think I, I, I was yet to discover them before even doing any of this this content. And obviously, when they were announced for 2020, I got got myself uh, listening to them. But it's just going to unlock a lot of people, I think, and a lot of people to enjoy them. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think we're in a, an interesting time of like political climate as well. And I don't think anyone tackled. They're that. perfect for that. <laughs> yeah. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> So let's uh, let's get into these these six headliners that we've got. Um, let's let, let's start with the Friday. Dave, talk to me, guys. What 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 are our thoughts on on Dave closing? They'll be the the youngest ever headliner of Reading and Leeds. What are our thoughts? I I I no, for probably for the last year we probably knew it was going to happen. It was probably about time it was going to happen. I don't get me wrong. I like his music, and when he, as soon as he was announced for that Park Life exclusive, I knew that he would be coming to Reading and Leeds. The only very easy comparison it is to make is that we saw the show that Stormzy put on, just gone, and it was incredible. You've got all sorts of people basically saying, "Wow, what a, what a headliner slot that was!" And it, even people wouldn't have even expected to do that. And will Dave do that same impact? I'm not so sure. Yeah, I think like he's. I think he's a bit of a force to be reckoned with. I think what he's done in, in, in like young black music is incredible. I think that especially his first album was out of this world. Um, and it won the Mercury, right? So it's like, he's a, he's a proper artist. Um, he also has that, he's not like a pop artist. I don't think in that kind of shiny sense, he has that kind of edge in a way that I don't think even Stormzy does, uh, which I think is a lot more Reading and Leeds. I've not listened to the second album yet. I know that it came out, but it's been a busy year. I'm sorry, but I think that, that like he has a lot of fans, and I don't know what you guys get with like the on on Twitter, but the comments for me was nearly everyone yeah. per Dave. No, was yeah, uh, Dave, yeah, yeah. Is Dave, 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 Dave. Um, I think the only thing I would say is that compared to Stormzy, Stormzy is a headliner. Like he is the headliner. You could put him on any headline bill, yeah. and he fits and he works. Is Dave? that same person I don't know I don't know he's really he's a really great recording artist and I really enjoyed him in Top Boy but is he uh, like, <laughs> that good live but then you know like he broke the internet with Tiago Silva at Glastonbury and he had like yeah. Radio 1 stage when we had the Radio 1 stage so uh, yeah, I'm sure it'll be great it's, it's going to be a hard headline slot to follow with Stormzy and the, the show that he put on mm. with the dancers and the guitarist, and he made it a proper Reading and Leeds inspired headline slot. Mm. Dave doesn't seem like that sort of performer. He's going to stand on stage and he's just going to rap. Um, and he's going to put on a good show, of course, and he's going to be the youngest ever headliner, which is incredible. And, you know, paired with, 
down on the uh, the bill as well is going to be Little Sims. There's two young black artists that are on that Friday. It's going to be huge. Mm. Um, but it's going to be hard for him to follow in Stormzy's footsteps, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think the, the other thing to consider here is that, like, the six headliner booking is a different thing. So mm. when, when it was three, or even, like, four or five with the co-headliners, there's certain, like, almost rules that, that would go into place to be a headliner... Yeah, and I yeah. think that whole thing's been shattered, which changes how the whole thing works. But I think that's also okay. Um, yeah, I think he'll. I th- do you know what? Like, I think, I think, I think back to the years where I'm like, oh, are they ready to headline? I remember Biffy did it in 2013. I was like, really, Biffy? And then they were mm. <laughs> Biffy fucking Clyro. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's. I think I think you've also got to remember you've got a year of people getting excited. I think they just sold out early entry pass this morning. Did I see that? Did For Reading, yeah. yeah right. The weekend down early entry sold That's out. Nuts. So, I, I, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. And they say that there's no second release. So this is it, apparently. Yeah. So that's if, if that's what we're led to believe, it's ridiculous. You know, whether it's the Rage Against the Machine and Arctic Monkey effect, or whether it's all of the six headliners combined. I know that Dave, 2019, he headlined the Radio 1 stage, and it was filled. I was kind of hanging around the 1975 and kind of went to the end of Dave and it was packed I couldn't get in mm, it was it was the radio one tent was packed so like it's it's people are people love him people are going to want to see him and you know it's not going to be a quiet set I, no, I, it's going to be very captivating uh, yeah well definitely definitely and I think he probably politically falls into a similar position where Rage do where he he will tackle topics in a way which is very like R&L um, but he's got that fan base he just does like he I, I uh, but then, like, I speak to people who are like in their fifties and sixties, and they've heard of Dave. Yeah, you know, he's massive. He's a massive artist, and I think we're probably. I think it's a little bit like in twenty nineteen with nineteen seventy five or Biffy, where people are, like, are they ready to headline? I, I think we'll look back on this in five, ten years time and be like, ah, that was mental. <laughs> yeah. Dave headline Reading and Leeds. That was crazy because that might not, never, might never happen again. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's just going to be an upwards trajectory, but. You mentioned earlier, Jack, about you know the stereotypes of headliners and what they needed to fit into, and this year it definitely has been completely shattered. And a name that was not expected, and I think a lot of people was like, "What is Megan The Stallion?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Silence speaks words. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I, I I think in hindsight it makes complete sense. I think if you look at what they, what R and L have been doing over the last probably five years, they've gone for a more diverse pop kind of. I, I've got this weird like analogy with with music where it, it fits into three categories for me, which is like urban and hip hop, rock and alternative, and electronic and dance and everything fits into those three categories and then there's a scale of pop and like super abstract and somewhere in the middle for that is, is good for me and Magna Stallion is a, a left of the field like pop artist but then she has like filthy records like WAP and, and like and, but then I look at like Savage and it's and those records are massive they're yeah. absolutely massive and she's a real real rapper and a real talent um, and if, if you dropped her in, in, if she was releasing records in, I don't know, 1997, she would have been on this lineup. She might not have headlined because it's 1997, but she would be an artist that would feature in that, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, I do agree. And you've got to think of the positives as well, with it being, you know, it's a solo female headliner and also a female of colour. Like, yeah. it's huge, huge. <laughs> That's a cat. <laughs> um, <laughs> But it's, it's, it's she tick huge... she ticks all the boxes. I think yeah. well, the last female headliner solo artist was was, was Bjork. Was that ninety five? Yeah. And the fact that we've got two on the same uh, bill is ridiculous. Yeah. You know, it's it, that's a good thing that the six headliners have managed to create. As mu- as, as polarizing people might not like the two main stages and only having ten minutes to get between each set. But, I mean, you're giving the chance for people that maybe n- not have headlined uh, to, to headline, so... Yeah, I think it opens up for them. Well, I, th- I think I, I think a big part of this is that music has changed dramatically over the last 15 years with probably with the rise of, like, the internet streaming and Napster and downloads and going from, like, traditional record sales to 
to what how we can see music now has changed everything um and so what comes with that is this you don't have the fanfare of these massive artists that you would have had you don't we won't ever have a kings of leon again we won't ever have a, a red against the machine again or a red hot chili peppers or a metallica that's not to say that artists aren't bigger but they're it's just different and i think that that's where the six headliners come in better because if you were going to have if this was sort of a three headliner and you had halsey megan the stallion and then Arctic Monkeys, it would feel very weighted in one place. Yeah. Um, and it's hard, I think having it like this allows you to balance it a lot nicer in terms of like the gravity of artists. Talking about Arctic Monkeys, let's move over to the Saturday. The, the, the headliner, I mean, I mean, the big headline from this is that Arctic Monkeys and Bring Me are both headlining on the same day. Ollie Sykes went to the same school that all the Arctic Monkeys boys did. It's a big, it's a Sheffield day. It is, isn't it? Uh, uh, for, for the for the Reading Saturday, and they, they'll be closing out the festival in Leeds. Um, what an awesome booking this is! First time since 2014 that they've they they've headlined. They headlined back in 2009 as well, and they 2006 they sub headlined the year that they released their album. Year before that, they're on the 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 Carling stage, the Festival Republic stage, and in a year when they released their album, they went up, all the way up to sub headliner. <laughs> Absolutely mental! One of the biggest bands that this country has ever seen. Oh, it's a monkeys. And they went on to headline Glastonbury in 2007, was it? 2007, yeah. Right, on one album. <laughs> one album. Like two albums. They'd had two albums out by oh, then. Oh, they just released album two. The, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely yeah. ridiculous that they've, they, they did that. But. Yeah. Well, I think, I, I think like, and you, you guys from, from, from like Twitter content will notice, AM will be Riot has been on everything for the last like, <laughs> four or five yeah. years. Yeah, um, every single year, and it'll be back next year as well. People until yeah, well. again, yeah, <laughs> until 2035 when they headline again. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I've been a big fan of Arctic Monkeys since since day one. Um, I, I have uh, their first album on vinyl, and it's scratched to absolute pieces because you know my brother used to listen to it and play Need for Speed, um, and it's and it's great. Like they're 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 brilliant. Um, I absolutely could not stand their last record, but the l- rest of them were really <laughs> Yeah. Um, there was, I mean, there's, to be fair, there's been tour. Obviously, when they did release that last record, um, there was AM, AM Ori Riot 10 times because they expected them to be announced, and obviously they were announced to transmit, but there's rumours to say that they decided to not do Reading Leeds due to the type of record it was so it'll be interesting to see what this next album will hold and whether it will fit into that sort of am album category obviously which was made that 2014 set so famous mm. yeah i mean but that and that was a real big thing for them because was it was it am album four or album five five I'd say four or five. five five yeah the first two humbug and suck it and see it yeah yeah, yeah five yeah. five so, and I think like they went down a real classic British rock album. Um, so they started off in like the heart, the height of like indie, and then I think moved into something that was kind of more Beatlesy. Um, and then I think that AM was there. We're going to be a rock band. Um, so yeah, I think you're right. It's interesting to see where they'll go f- with this, because I think they're they're just they're one of the biggest bands in the country. They just think. It's, I think people, well, it sold out so quickly, people are really excited for this. And this is the first well, time yeah, de- since 2017, is that right? I believe so. I mean, no, 2018. 2018. Yeah. They played, they play, they headline transmit 2018, didn't yeah. they? Um, but they absolutely, in the, in the first day of the tickets, I think it was two hours, wasn't it? I think it was 11 o'clock on the Friday yeah. that the general sale tickets, the day tickets are sold out for Saturday yeah. and for Sunday leads. In two hours, however many tickets they sell for day tickets had sold out. Like, that is the Arctic Monkey effect. That there's, at the minute, they're technically a UK exclusive for this year because there's nothing else booked for the UK for them. So people are wanting to see them, and, and it's obvious. Mm. I'd love to know how much they spend on them. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea how much that is. With Rage Against the Machine as well, the, the, the budget this year was... Uh, Oh, it's, it's been spent. You can tell it's been spent. And obviously they've got they've had to balance that with cheaper bookings. But, you know, to still pull off Dave that's arguably probably going to be asking for a hefty price at 
at this point in his career, and then to pair that with Arctic Monkeys bringing their eyes and Rage Against the Machine, it's quite incredible what they've done. I wonder. I wonder if. I wonder if with Rage in 2020 they had paid already a bit of them to to play, so they book, rebooked them for 2022. Yeah. Yeah. Potentially. Um, yeah. I think the other thing with, with Arctic Monkeys is that they've recorded an album, right? Like it's recorded and ready. To it's, it's ready to. Oh, I think yeah. it's ready to go. But that's what uh, Matt Helder said. The drummer. This is for when when they headline, there'll be a new album out. I think it's going to start next year. Is there um, any like knowledge on it, like where it's recorded or who's done it? I don't think so. I think it's all been kept under wraps. You can have a look, but it, and that was the exciting part. Well, that was a big part of it. I bet it's very, very hush hush. Yeah. Nuts. Yeah, I think that'll be a good one. I think for those people attending Reading that have not seen them before as well, that's going to be a big one. For yeah. sure. And then the other the other headliner, Bring Me the Horizon, on 10 minutes before Arts and Monkeys headline, <laughs> it's uh, Bring Me the Horizon, that, uh, the first time they've been back since they did a secret set in 2018. Well, what do we guys think of that one? Yeah, very, very anticipated again. Um I think it was sort of before Catfish and the Bottomman headlined. I always compare it to that because before they headlined, it was a uh, loads of calls every year. Same with AM, obviously not as much, but for them to come back, it was Bring Me and it was Catfish for those sort of fans of that sort of music. So, um, yeah, very anticipated. It'd be a very good set, I'm sure. And I think a lot of people were very lucky to catch that 2018 set if they did. Um, but yeah, I think it's a really good booking. It was always going to happen, and it's on the same day as AM. I think it's a lot to do with crowd management as well, because you know, you know what that. If they paired that AM day with someone who was quite sub- substantially smaller, then I don't know whether they didn't want no one to go to the other act. That, that's what I think that's to do with it as well. But yeah, very good. Yeah, I think that they're. they're I think they're great. I remember them in 2018 really big well I remember one of my buddies listening to oh, I can't, what was their album before Ammo the one with the umbrella I remember anyway this, listening to that and he was like a big fan of just like pop music and then he was like what are you doing listening to this and I was like okay they, these guys are clearly doing something that I'm not paying attention to because they're hitting or new audiences then they did that secret set and released Mantra and then Ammo came out and I was like okay these guys are the truth they've been around for ages they've played loads of the stages they've been a heavy heavy rock band they're now filling in that gap of i think they're filling in that lincoln park gap that doesn't exist anymore that kind of mm. some that, that kind of commercial slightly electronic inspired heavy rock act um and i think from that moment on i knew they were going to headline some at some point i'm surprised that they weren't there last year um but yeah but yeah this true. works i'm happy with this <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to complain um yeah there I, I mean i can see the the comparisons you're pulling with lincoln park i think ollie sykes was good he's good friends with um mark shinoda and uh, chester bennington of you know lincoln park um and it's they're fitting into that role you know they're being played on radio one now so they're becoming a lot more commercialized and when they first started out as a metal band really i mean this lineup is ticking all the boxes really you've got the rock with rage you've got like metal that's going to be get covered with bring me you've kind of got indie rock with arctic monkeys you've got rap it's it's, it's all there mm. yeah it's a really nicely well run the only thing it's not got is like a real electronic Dance yeah. disclosure y kind of Jason Status y lineup. Yeah. Um, I must admit though, we were trying to we were finding it difficult when obviously doing all these prediction posters, we were finding it difficult to say who does fit a slot as well as, you know, sort of yeah. disclosure does and where would they fit in on that lineup. I think dance music in general has had a, such a big shine over the last ten years and I don't know who that is anymore like Ch- Chase and Status were the, the hot, well Pendulum were the hottest thing in the entire world yeah. for a long time and they were always rumoured to be a smaller headliner um, then Chase, Chase and Status came out and absolutely dominated everything the Prodigy were the same I don't think they had they had like once in the, in the 90s um, and then Disclosure obviously became the biggest thing since life's bread so I don't really know <laughs> who that is anymore and I don't think dance music is quite I think you have a lot of artists who have one record um yeah, and but then I don't think you have these absolute behemoths in the same way that you you've have. you've got some of the older guys like um, Martin Garrix and David yeah. Guetta that are all getting booked for Creamfields, but whether they fit on a headline 
slot for R and L. I don't know. I'd throw so, David Guetta, that would be fucking great, wouldn't it? It would be. It'd be great. It'd be great. But with with a lineup like that, every lineup we were doing with with uh, with me and Adam, it was. I was saying one day or one of the headliners has got to be dance, and we were trying to rack our brains. Chemical Brothers. Trying to rack our brains for someone that could that could fill that slot, and obviously they've not done that this year. We thought of it, going off twenty 2020 twenty or twenty twenty one, sorry, with the six headliners, it was the first year that they'd done that, so there was no there's no pattern that we could follow. So we were kind of thinking yeah. you'd go one rock, one dance, one pop, one rap, but they've obviously not followed suit with that. So you know, it's, it's, it's it'd be fun to see next year or twenty twenty three what lineup that is so we can see if there's a sort of pattern that, that's going to start following with the six headliners I think the other thing to consider is that the, there's only, now that now they've got less stages the dance stage is their biggest indoor stage now uh, yeah. so they could no probably point, yeah. have more one-off artists that are big the hot, hot, hot of the moment artists um, DJs are way easier than and bands, you know what I mean. You turn up with a USB yeah. stick and you plug it in, and you go. Yeah, it's true though. I mean, we've seen that obviously with like Wilkinson. Obviously, that's a big name, and they're meant to headline the dance stage. Dance stage in 2020 when it was cancelled, so you can see where they're going with that. Um, but yeah, I mean, Creamfields, as we mentioned earlier, I mean, they spent a lot of money this year, a lot of money with their new South and North, and the headliners on them are quite spectacular for that sort of music. If you're into it, I even looked at the Creamfields lineup. They're good. It's it's mega. <laughs> yeah, it's big. I think South is Calvin Harris and David Guetta. Calvin know. could be one, I think, and he would fit in that pop kind of place as well, quite well. Yeah, um, yeah. I yeah. imagine that his is a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Which would probably dissuade people from, well, especially FR for for booking them for a headline slot because the a disclosure you kind of would imagine would be one of the cheaper headliners from last year. So would they want to blow a lot of budget on a dance act? Yeah, they've not done it this year, so. I think I think it's who's going to sell tickets, right? Who's going to sell tickets? Arts and Monkeys. <laughs> and that's, and they, they've done it. Yeah, yeah, that is the answer. Um, and obviously, a very heavyweight Sunday in Rage Against the Machine. I know, you're very excited for you two boys. So, uh, talk to me. Oh, I'm I'm really looking forward to him. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm jealous I'm I'm jealous that Jack's seen him before. <laughs> this will be the first time that I've seen him. Um, obviously, you know, being twenty, you, they've not been around long enough for me to have really seen them f- to me remember them. And obviously, they've not released music in ages. And the fact that Zach's coming back and fronting the band because obviously they've had um, profits of rage and they've had lots of domin- denominations of the band just without Zach there, and it's just obviously not the same. Mm. So Zach coming back and, and fronting the band, I'm really fucking excited for it. Yeah, I think the Prophets of Rage stuff was brilliant, um, and the, uh, I think that really worked for them as a like a band. Uh, Audio Slave, obviously, was the other, other thing they did with... Um, Chris Cornell, yeah. Chris Cornell, thanks. Um, and... <laughs> Yeah, I think I think like Tom Morello's gone and done his side projects and done lots of like Bruce Springsteen and stuff, and they've just become proper, like a proper musicians. Um, you, oh, fuck, you get them together, they are technically one of the best bands in the entire world. Like what Tom Morello does with that guitar is outrageous. No, it's ridiculous. Um, in, in two thousand eight, I remember it so well. It was the first, so my, they headline the Friday it was my first ever headline I ever saw. <laughs> which kind of set a shit bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they came out pitch black, and there was just an air raid siren playing for like, I don't know, 90 seconds, and then spotlights hit all four of them. And they were in Guantanamo Bay suits with bags over their heads on their knees. And then the air raid siren stopped and went pitch black. And then they just, lights came on, they kept the suits on, they all were around their instruments, and they just played bomb track completely blind. And they were like, what the fuck? Um, I expect <laughs> political rants. Expect all of that is going to be absolutely amazing. Yeah, I must admit. I mean, I mentioned earlier, 
it's one that I had to introduce myself to very, very recently, and it's Ruben's one for lecturing me on all kinds of music. So uh, I think he's one of the. He, this is definitely one of the main ones that he's been hammering on, and I'm very excited to. Uh, I mean, you're you're both probably in the position now where you're jealous of the stuff that I haven't heard yet. So I mean, yeah. that's the thing. Yeah, I get to get involved Absolutely. with that, and I've got a year to revise. I mean, that, like. Uh, I'm terrified of doing a video about them because I don't even know where to start. Like, how do you really? even start yeah. on Rage Against the Machine? But we'll get there. That's going to be a long old who the fuck. <laughs> I'm gonna, it's going to be a long old. I'm going to be writing notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's, it's going to be a fun one to do that. Yeah. And obviously the other headliner, Halsey. Left one there. left field. I yeah. I didn't see anyone predict, apart from one person that we saw that is a follower uh, of yeah. the Randall Mill... I've seen no one predict Halsey, and you know what, looking back at I was kind of a bit surprised when we did the live reaction on Instagram, but I'm starting to warm more to the idea of Halsey headlining, I think it's going to be, she's going to put on a really, really good show. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I think, I, I think if you're going kind of musically as well, she fits into that, that category of, well, she's a pop artist, of course, um, but also she does, she's a really good songwriter, um, she has been around on that kind of indie-ish kind of scene. She played radio one. She headlined the radio one stage or sub headline with Hayes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sub headlined. And so, like, she's familiar with the festival. She's got a massive fan base. She worked with people like Young Blood, um, and other people <laughs> like that. That works, I think, for for her. Um, I think she's great. I've always, I've actually always been a big fan of, of her. Lauren's a massive fan of her too. So we've we've had her kind of been playing over the years Com did not expect a, a headline booking no. like not at all um but i think that she'll put on a good good show yeah i agree i think i think it's one of them ones that you think oh yeah that's cool and then you go deeper and deeper and realize how many songs she has how many songs you actually know and you and then i watched a few clips of her lives after since her announcement and i was like yeah she's gonna put on a show she's gonna be good and she's got some great even her older albums i think it's Maybe Badlands, I think that was one from around, you know, 2015, 2016 time. So, yeah, look, she's got a, a, a lot of music to choose from as well. So I think it'll be a really, really good show. And she, as Ruben, you said earlier, she's a performer and she's going to be really, really good. And a lot better than I think a lot of people anticipated and now they're all realising. Um, so that's the headline, is done. And I think it's a pretty solid year this year, let's be honest. So um, we'll go on to the sub-headliners. And uh, first day, we're... Bring it back to the Friday. We've got Polo G and Little Sims. Who the fuck is Polo G? <laughs> American rapper, TikTok. Did he, yeah, I think. Was, is he the guy that did that record with KSI? And that was like it. Fucking Polo yeah, G. yeah, he did do it. <laughs> he did do a song on KSI. I mean, uh, to be fair, last year when we had when we were doing our, um, like, you know, who do you want to be there? Surprisingly, his name came up a lot. Yeah. And I... Expect to see him. Didn't expect him to sub headline, if I'm honest. I expected him to maybe slot in in that sort of maybe headline in the one extra stage, but maybe he's way too big for that. I don't know. I, I don't mean, know I think I, th I think he's got thirty uh, with TikTok. I, Spotify streams isn't really the the way to go, but I think he's got like thirty million Spotify streams. Let me have a look. Thir Polo G. He's got thirty three million monthly listeners on Spotify. Uh, so you... it will be interesting to see how many monthly listeners he has in six months' time, though. That's the, that's that's my yeah. only problem yeah. with like the modern way of booking people and getting. But then again, does it really fucking matter if they're hot at the moment, right? And they're of that time. Is that not what a, re a lineup's supposed to represent? Well, I mean, that's going to sell tickets, and that's all. That's yeah. what the cares about. But also, like, this is like supposed to be a moment in in history. If you're going to look back at 2022, those are the artists that are, that are going to be. Oh, that was that year. Right? It kind of makes sense. I remember like, in 2019, I covered so many fucking mumble rappers and emo rappers, <laughs> and none of them are around anymore. No, none of them are making no. music anymore. And it's like, but that was what was around at the time, and people were going yeah. mad for them. So is it okay yeah. that they're not going to leave a legacy? Yeah. Does he deserve to be sub-headlining over Little Sims? Absolutely not, because Little no. Sims is incredible. <laughs> but... <Yeah. laughs> Yeah, that mumble rapper just reminded me. Remember when I think it was 2018 that they had uh, Little Pump doing the I don't know what it was the one X stage, and the crowd was ridiculous. How they didn't, why they didn't stick him on main stage, I have no idea. Because 
you could not get near the ten mm. to see them, and it's ridiculous. But yeah, uh, Little Sims uh, is a very good booking. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, uh, Little Sims it fully deserved that slot, and I don't know when the last time she played R and L was, but it's not been a, for a good few years if she's ever played, and for her to go onto the main stage is huge. She is what a performer. Her band with her are incredible. It's going to be what? That's going to be a really good set. I'm really, really looking forward to that. And if people haven't listened to Little Sims and aren't in tune with who she is, then you need to get <laughs> you need to get, get on it. in tune. And with it'll her. be easy yeah. to get involved with it as well. Very for um, sure. I think was it 2019 when she played Glastonbury, and I remember watching that and being like, ah. Oh. She doesn't just have really cool records. She's a proper performer as well. She's a proper performer, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, There's clips of her at Glastonbury on YouTube, and it's... Just just completely pucker. Like, I love... I, I, I first came across her with her at the Gorillas, um, and then she did, like, I think 101 FM was on her side, really paying attention. Um, of course, then, with Dave as well, was on uh, was on Top Boy, um, yeah. and, and was just great. Um, and then this year, this album is... Uh, incredible it's incredible every record she's put out is epic and new and man she gives every every one of those rappers a run for her money i don't think she even wants to be in the conversation and that makes her so much cooler <laughs> she's so cool <laughs> so yeah yeah I'm, the, 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 I'm gonna... this record is going to go down as one of the best of this year for sure it's uh, if you've not listened listen it's uh it's incredible and, and also on the friday you've got glass animals who have made a recent resurgence through tiktok that have kind of blown up a few of their songs obviously they've been around since 2014 i think i think they got nominated uh for a grammys for for best new artist along with uh, little sims which i'm not sure they've been around since 2014 so whether they deserve new artist or not but they're there and they're going to be sub headlining under Megan Thee Stallion. Mm. What do we think? Glass Animals are the thirty-third most listened to artist on Spotify. That's there we <laughs> like it's one song. Thirty-third isn't it? biggest artist in the world. That is ridiculous, isn't it? Pro- probably bigger than Halsey. Like uh, maybe yeah. not. I don't know, but but certainly uh, Australia is obsessed with them. Uh, last year they won the hottest record of the world. Um, that album. Is disco land, not disco land, that's fucking Jerry. Um, <laughs> album, anyway, you know the album I'm talking about. It was, yeah. it was massive. Um, Dreamland. Dreamland, there we go. They're, they're, yeah. they're brilliant. Not far off. I absolutely love, I absolutely love them. I actually think they could headline. I really think that they're in that, in that, in that place. Yeah. I'm not sure everyone else would agree with me, but they're, they're, they're three albums deep. All of them are great. They've got big views, big resurgence recently. New singles out. I think that they're, they're brilliant. So I think that's going to be a special set, that. And very good performers as well. I mean, even if you don't, you know, if your average person looks at it and watches watches a clip of them singing Heat Waves, you won't get the full, eff- just because that's their biggest song, it doesn't mean that's not going to be their full effect. I mean, their song Tokyo Drifting with Denzel Curry is, that live is ridiculous. Yeah. Like, crazily good. So they're going to be very, very good. And it's very smart booking. And one that we were talking about for last year. So yeah. it makes sense, and it was overdue, I think. Absolutely, absolutely. I think their back catalogue's great as well. You go to records like yeah. Gooey, and I think that they'll just absolutely smash it. Um, so, yeah, I think, and I think that we will look at them in years to come, and they will be one of the biggest bands, because they love each other, and they're going to stick around making music, um, and they're very, very talented songwriters, outside of making Glass Animals records as well. So I think that we're probably going to get used to them being a household name. Yeah, I agree. And then on the Saturday, we've got, under Arctic Monkeys, we've got Wolf Alice and Fontaine's DC. And how Wolf Alice have made two six headliner lineups and not actually been a headliner is actually quite amazing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, both, uh, yeah, great bookings to be honest with you. And the Wolf Alice I absolutely love and really got into last year. I remember catching some of their set at. Um, 2021 and being like if I I was sat there and I was like if I knew every single song this would be one of the best sets like they're incredible Ellie what a rock star she is 
Should they, they, they deserve to headline. For me, they're in a lot of my predictions to be one of the six headliners because I think they deserve it. But obviously, RNL don't see that. I think next year, potentially, or maybe they'll have a year off, but yeah. they're definitely destined for that headline slot in a, in a few years. Absolutely, they put on an absolute show. Yeah, they're, they're fucking loud, man. That's what I love about them. <laughs> like, they can't, well, I guess they're also not, but when they want to be loud, they're loud. Um, they're brilliant. What I would say about 2021 was that they were incredible, but most people weren't watching the show to know that, that, that they were incredible. Mm. And so the question then becomes, why? And a big part for me is I think they're signed, they're signed to an indie, they're signed to Dirty Hit, they're not signed to a major record company, so they're not getting the publicity in the same way that bands like 1975 do, being co-signed with Polydor. Um, and everyone else here is signed to a major record company and getting other bits and bobs. You don't get many indie headliners. Um, but Wolf Alice are great, and I've been a fan of their music since Giant Peach. Um, and I think that they have played loads of nearly every stage. Caught them to a secret set in 2017, maybe? Oh, yeah, secret set, Best Royal Public. Yeah. Um, Probably, Incredible, yeah. absolutely brilliant. Um, and then, oh, this, when, when Last Man on Earth came out, I was like, I do not like this band anymore. They're not cool. Yeah, you didn't like that, did you? <laughs> uh, and then I saw it live, and I was like, oh, this makes <laughs> yeah. sense. Um, so, uh, yeah, and that album, Blue Weekend, is just... It's not. It's not acceptable how good it is. It is no, just I was, outrageous. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say. I think. I think they'll be very thankful they made that record because Blue Weekend has really shot them. You know, even now they've got uh, delicious things off of it, and that's now going doing the do, doing the circle um, after Last Man on Earth. So, yeah, I think they were. Um, you know, th- this album is now gonna hopefully put them just up and up and up as if they weren't already, but re- like. Yeah. Accelerated. Yeah. No, no other band I know of can make me like want to mush and cry at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just a mess when I see them. Um, and, yeah, <laughs> when they go and play like Smile, you're like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're brilliant. And Fonte's Fon- Fon- DC, well, yeah. Fon- yeah. Man, like, <laughs> they're, they're, they're a corker. I, when they first re- released Boys in the Battleland, I thought that was really cool. And I, I think my dad sent it to me actually while I was over there. Um, and I remember seeing them play just that record and I was like, here's another one trick pony until I went into the WTF episode for them and realized mm. how good they are. Um, and really glad that I didn't get to see them in 2020 because of the cancellation. Um, but they're brilliant. They're just so good. I love them. I can't wait to see them. Cannot wait. They're, what, what a band they are and they're destined for big things, I think. This is, I think this is going to be the biggest slot that they've played for r and and I think it's only going to get, with the more albums that they release, I think it's only just going to, their trajectory is huge. Mm. And they've just been announced that Sam Fender, Finsbury's Park as well. There's, yeah, they're sub-headlining under that, under Sam Fender, which is, which is huge. Um, let's, let's get on with Enter Shikari that are also on Saturday. They're a mainstay for r and now, aren't they? I don't know how many times they've played, but it's... Definitely double figures. They're what? What a band that they are. Fourteen. Yeah. Think so. That, Not that you're counting. Fourteen or twelve. <laughs> and they did that like eight eight sets in a weekend or something, didn't they? Yeah. Uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, that was nuts. Absolutely nuts. Yeah, they're 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 brilliant. I mean, they're local boys, um, and how like how do you even describe them? How do you describe them as a band? <laughs> they came Mental. around in the whole mist of like emo, but they played synthesizers like they were in Pendulum, and then neither. <laughs> they're like, like and that, that's that's what I always thought was incredible about them. Like they just, they're just energy, aren't they? Two thousand nine, I think it was. They they when Juggernauts came out, they they played like. I, I actually wasn't there when it happened, but they broke the record for crowd surfers. Um, oh really? Just uh, get the cards going. YouTube Juggernauts 2009 Reading, and it's the one yeah. thing that's still around, and it's just smoke from all the people <laughs> kicking up from mosh pits, and just floods the streams of people leaving leaving the, the fun barrier. The security are like <laughs> absolutely amazing. Yeah, um, and then yeah, they will be good, and I think. You know, with the, and it's these names like Enter Shikari and Fontaine's DC that 
they're going to always be favourites and they're always going to be welcome back. And they're and if they go a year without them, they're going to be back the year after. And obviously we've seen that this year. And then going on, obviously a day you, you can't have rage without run the jewels and moan skin or man skin, however you pronounce them. RTJ, RTJ and, 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 and rage is just, and, and with Denzel later on in the day, it's just the lineup of, of if you're into like old heavy rap rock, but I'm I'm hoping I'm dreaming that Denzel comes on with Rage uh, and does Balls on Parade because yeah, that, that would just that would just be <laughs> that would be incredible. Yeah, that would be cool, wouldn't it? That would be really cool. Um, and I think RTJ fall into that that category of of music really well. I think if 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 you want to go and do some research about the Battle Killer Mike show on Netflix, is hilarious, um, and it's a proper gem that no one really plucked on to um, but all of their music is hilarious and outrageous and, and bullshit and loud and they're, they're so cool man Run the Jewels is just one of the coolest bands in the world <laughs> oh, I was just going to say Main Skin obviously won Eurovision what was it this this year or last year this year they won they won Eurovision and that's a still weird booking like, it, I know it, yeah. over the years of like we'll book someone because it's funny to book them um, yeah and uh, yeah, we'll see. I wonder. I wonder how many times before that a, a artist from Eurovision has been booked for Reading and Leeds off the back of them winning. <laughs> I don't know. If oh, it's Lord, fun. Don't know if Lordy ever played. Did Lordy ever play Reading and Leeds? Yeah, well, it's funny really because obviously they've been poked into this sub headliner slot, and um, obviously it kind of goes well sort of with the day they're on, but. I think the, when was it? I think it was the Snuts for 2021 where they played about I don't know what was it two o'clock. I think Mainskin were meant to be there, and then they 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 never got added to the lineup. But then they then got taken out because there was pictures all over on that day when there was like people taking photos of it, and obviously the Snuts got announced like what three days before or something ridiculous. So it's a big jump in a few months. Mm. Yeah, weird. It's interesting. If if it's true, but there was a lot of stuff going around just a few days before the festival. Definitely, really, yeah, really odd. I think it's just crazy having some fun, really. <clears throat> but, um... <laughs> and then Bastille, I know a band that Adam is going to absolutely love. I think me yeah, and Jack are going to be on the same YouTube, side fighting mate. against you. <laughs> There's a WTF episode out there, which is my most disliked video. Uh, <laughs> And good. Loved and good. Loved <laughs> yeah. making that video, and people that love Bastille hated me for it. I think it. I think that's really what, what gave me the trajectory to become uh, to, to finish off making videos for everyone. But there we go. Um, yeah, they're not. They're not for me. I actively dislike them, but I know they're going to headline this festival one day because they're. Yeah. Oh, that'll be the day that I. <laughs> The day that I go back to the uh, the camp before <laughs> before the headliner finishes. Thing is, with Bastille, I I like them because they were like you know everyone has those sort of bands or artists that are sort of very very early memories of really liking. Like I'm talking beginning of secondary school, I was into them. I, it was when Pompeii Floors that big album came out, which basically introduced them to the world, and that's why I've always liked them and always thought. And I've and they were the first one of the first bands I really remember thinking I really want to see live and yeah. I do think they're a very good pro- and I will stand by I do think they're a very good live I think more people uh, like them than don't I just yeah I enjoy I'm them. I'm I'm just sorry that that's yeah, your that's early fine. memory of music <laughs> 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 but yeah they, they are they, they are for some people and they aren't for some there's obviously you know there's reasons why people don't like them there's, there's you get that with every band you know some people like some bands some people don't like others and obviously me and Jack are on the the side of not liking Bastille when Adam is. Yeah, we need we need a fourth to see if they can equal it out. <laughs> I think that millions and millions of monthly listens is probably enough to justify them being there. Um, yeah, oh, for sure. Know, like you can't like everyone, and this is the thing. Like a lot of people, I find it hilarious. And every single year, you get the comment on on Twitter or, or whatever saying, "This is the shittest lineup I've ever seen." Yeah, fuck bizarre. off. <laughs> you can't like everyone and if everyone liked the same bands then there would be the no one would like bands because it would be exactly the, like do you know what I mean you've got to have people like liking and not liking stuff yeah um, I agree um, so yeah I think that that's 
I'm and I, I'm just amazed we have this lineup this year and we've still got people. <laughs> like, how does yeah. this not fit someone's enjoyment? I don't understand. Un- un- unless you're Melvin Ben and you're booking the festival yourself, I don't think anyone's going to ever be happy. Everyone's going to be happy with it. So, yeah, yeah. you're um, always going to get some people. Do you ever count how many how many people you see over the weekend? Like, what's like, what what's the how many people do you like go and see total? Uh, this year, I think I totaled twelve or thirteen a day. Right, that's a lot, isn't it? My Friday, I remember yeah. my Friday being very busy this year, especially Friday, because I had, and then there was the two secret sets with Don Broker and Frank Carter on that day as well, and I just yeah. remember that being heavy, like like I'm talking having to make big decisions, um, leaving Frank Carter early for Sam Fender and stuff, like it was. Well, that, that was that, that was crazy. You had Don Broco and then you had sports team. And then they had a few bands, and then Declan McKenna, and then you were straight over to Frank yeah. Carter, and then from Frank Carter straight to Sam Fender, yeah. and then that's where the, the headliner start. and then you had the sub on the other stage. Yeah. I can't, who was that? It was who the, was the sub That's when you had H, AJ Tracy. Yeah. Um, Crazy. That was, yeah, that Friday that was busy, was, but yeah. I think I, floating around and kind of seeing even, you know, some bands on the introducing stage, especially if, if people are walking, if you're walking from green and you're coming in, past the Nando's this year, you're yeah, walking, yeah. To, if you're going over to Main Stage West, you're walking past the introducing stage. If someone's there, go and stand and watch them yeah. for a bit. Especially for smaller artists like that. I swear, if you're not doing, if they're not doing a secret set and they weren't a big, big act, mm. you just go and stand and watch them. It's huge for them. And you get some gems. Obviously, I love to look at the lineups and you look at some of the smaller acts on the introducing through the years. You've had 1975 and Catfish and Sports Team played it in 2018. Like You've, you've got bands that go on to huge, huge things. Yeah. <clears throat> well, look, Florence, Friendly Fires, uh, so many people. Anyone that basically does like a, a secret set has played the introducing stage at some point. Yeah, Wolf Alice have played the introducing stage. Yeah. Like it's, oh, I saw yeah. them do a secret set on the introducing stage as well. I remember that. Um, wow. And, uh, I forgot about that. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> just drop that in. <laughs> just casually. Um, but, but like, that's, the thing I always say is, I think the, ma- the b- biggest I ever did was 2019. I did 40 acts over the weekend. Wow. And it wasn't enjoyable. I was trying to see no. too much. So yeah. out, of an, out of a poster that has 150 to 200 names on it, as, like, like 20 of them. If you like mm. 20, then you're fine. So yeah, you have a good time. Uh, there's, there's more than 20 here that I like. So I'm yeah. done. I'm justified. I mean, not you, you, you are not going to go anyway. <laughs> well, of course. Yeah. But, you know, if <laughs> it, it, help, it helps that if, you like some. If if, well, if like if the if it's I don't know whatever it is twenty if it was two hundred quid and you went and saw twenty bands it's ten quid a band like that's banging. Yeah. Um, yeah. And obviously it's more than that, but but the point is, and you'll see more. Um, so. It's I, I think when when you take when you take. Um, festivals like that you think if Arctic Monkeys do a tour which we're thinking they're going to do an arena tour next year you're paying what probably 90 pounds a ticket Easy. if you think that if you're if you're if you're going to go and see Arctic Monkeys if you're paying 90 pounds for a ticket you paid what I think it was 280 for an early bird yeah. entry I mean it's a lot of money this year they've, they've hi- yeah. you know hyped it up but Raging Against the Machine are similar though you pay 100 pounds to see them Dave probably 40 pounds just in your headliners alone you're going to get your money's worth Absolutely. so yeah. Absolutely. I agree. Well, I mean, I'm, I've never really been one to, you know, sort of moan about pricing because of what you do get. I mean, I must admit, didn't like the car parking pricing this year. Did not like that. That's gone up. That's about that's doubled. But um, yeah, no. It, they've got they've great. got to make the money for the amount of money they've spent <laughs> on yeah, the on yeah. the acts this year. Yeah, it's true. Um, but no, yeah, it's ridiculously expensive. But so it's such good value for us pundits that go. So. Um, yeah, um, punters, should I say. But, um, yeah, we're going to go on now to sort of the... We're going to do sort of quick fire of all the other names that are on there per day. So we're going to start the Friday, and it is Circle Waves, Fever 333, Griff, Joy Crooks, Pink Pantheress, and Wallows. Go. <laughs> um, Circle Waves and 333, cool, makes sense. that They fit into that kind of indie, both indies and kind of rock, rock sounds. Um both have WTF episodes. Just shout out my channel. You can go check yeah, out. Um, we'll do that at the end. <laughs> <laughs> um, Griffin Joy Crooks, I don't really know a lot about, but we will be diving into them more. Pink Panthers, I think, is really cool. I think 
yeah some exciting music coming from there and Wallows are the most exciting band on that lineup for me <laughs> I fucking no, love Wallows that, so you? much <laughs> I saw I caught I started listening to Wallows in 2017 and I said these guys need to play Reading and they haven't since then so I'm just excited After third time lucky five years that they'll finally fucking yeah. see them yeah, um, I, I, I actually yeah, very similar thoughts to you. I mean, Circle Waves are a band I actually really love, but then I saw them support Jerry, and I was a little bit disappointed, but I think it was the atmosphere, and I'm hoping Reading then will bring it back up, because obviously support's a funny thing. You know, everyone's there to see Jerry Cinnamon, so you go there, and then you're stood there, but then you've got gaps all around you, and it's always a bit funny. But um, yeah, I think they'll be really good. And then, yeah, same with you, with Griffin, Joy Kirks, but Pink Panther S, obviously on an upwards stretch trajectory should I say now so yeah very very cool bookings I think some of those looking forward to to looking at a lot of those across the weekend obviously we're going to have loads more acts like that when the when the next lineup announcement drops whenever that is we're already getting people asking when that is and we don't know and you've just had it so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, on the Saturday we've got Jack Harlow as a special guest which is quite cool um, that special guest obviously was taken by nothing but thieves this year um, and I wonder if Jack Harlow is going to be the opener of the main stage on the Saturday, whether it is going to hold the same weight yeah. because the the Nothing But Thieves won a massive band that are renowned at Reading and Leeds, and also it was the Friday that they were opening, and this is the Saturday, so it kind of it's not going to hold the same same thing. You got um, Jay, is, I want to say Jaden, an American Jayden, yeah. rapper. Yeah, he's there. Kid Brunswick, <laughs> <laughs> who are really cool, that um, were supporting Don Broca on their latest tour. Uh, Madison Beer, Ty Verdes, The Lathams, that I know Adam absolutely adores, and Wilkinson, I'm going to assume, are going to be headlining the dance stage. Uh, Kid Brunswick, formerly known as Brunswick. Is that right? Yeah. 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 That confused me when I was... <laughs> I was like... Sure, I did a video for a song called Brunswick. I, was, I lived on Brunswick Street at the time, so it was like, this is weird. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I don't get Jack Harlow at all. I just think he's like a pretty boy. He's a rapper, but that's just me. Um, I think that um, Ty Verdes is really cool, and I think Wilkinson will definitely headline that, headline the, uh, the dance tent. Um, I've been following Wilkinson since the start of his career in like 2009. So I'm really, 2010, really excited to go kind of share that his music in on my channel over there, and and I think that he'll just absolutely smash it. His new, newest single's bloody brilliant as well. Um, so I think there's a lot of music there. Have you seen him before? Probably. Yeah, I saw him headline like a local festival. Um, yeah, really good actually, but. As you mentioned, though, I do love the Lathams so much, and they are going to be massive. I will, ho I really, really do think that with all of my heart. And I found them talking about predictions for this year, and then I was like, "Who are these?" And then fell in love with them straight away. All of their songs are like sort of like your love for all sorts of bands who we spoke about over today. But yeah, you know, when every single song seems to hit and. Uh, yeah, I really, really recommend anyone who's listening and haven't checked them out properly, do it, because you won't regret it. 100%. And then, going on to the Sunday, we have RD, um, Chloe Moriondo, Denzel Curry, Hybrid Minds, and Pale Waves. I think that, I'm, so, I'm shocked that RD wasn't booked for this year, off the back yeah. of like the Body Remix. I think like, yeah. that makes complete sense. Um, unless he was booked, I just didn't know. No, he got. He came out, out with, with H. Like H. Yeah, uh, yeah right. But he didn't. It wasn't booked. We'll probably <clears> see him headline the one extra. I assume. <clears throat> that yeah, wouldn't surprise me. <clears throat> um, same with Hybrid Minds. I think Hybrid Minds will be headlining the dance stage. So it'll be the same with Wilkinson. Um, two drum bands headlining though. Like, is that? That's a bit weird, isn't it? Two drum bass headlining. But Potentially, but I mean they're there. I mean unless they bring in someone else that's going to headline that slot on the Sunday in the next lineup announcement. I mean that's going to be more clear sooner or closer to the 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 festival when we kind of when it gets put out in black and white for us to see who's yeah. going to be headlining and sub headlining and that. But at the minute, would be my best guess would be Hybrid Minds um, and Denzel Curry. 
things like Pale, Pale Waves won't be playing the Festival Republic stage because they're far too big. So that, mm. what's their other choice? They're going to have to play the main stage there unless they're bringing back another Radio 1 stage, which would just that's the, the, amazing. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. <laughs> like Radio 1 stage, it, you, you lose a lot of acts that would be absolutely perfect for that Radio 1 stage. You lose a lot of like, and then they have to take that a bump lot. up straight away. And then they're on at one o'clock, two o'clock, when they would probably would be on like four or five o'clock in the radio on stage. Mm. And then all of a sudden, they're kind of lost that sort of, especially for certain acts that are like so captivating. I think that the, the big thing you've got with this, and I don't want to go into like a bashing of, of oh, don't like change, but last year you have the Festival Republic stage, which is was there for one of the three days rather than three. Um, and what happens if you're bigger than the Festival Public Stage, but you're not a main stage act? Like, where do you play? And that's where Alfie Templeman and Kenny Hope were sat last year, and so they got put in the dance stage. In the dance, yeah. I just, I think they probably just need a, a smaller Radio One stage. Yeah, that would make sense to me. Um, or uh, there's, some, there's something there because what you had was. I loved I loved having like an all female day on on the Sunday last year. I think that was great. They really yeah. pushed out and, and proved that like you had an amazing day in the Festival Republic stage. But what if you're a band like an indie band? You just don't have anywhere to play. Like if you're a new indie band, you don't have yeah. anywhere to play. So you need we need to have something else. Either we go for like I mean, a, a three day Festival Republic or two day Festival Republic at least, um, or, or have a, have a, another stage. I, I mean, Girl in Red, Girl in Red could have easily gone on to Radio 1 stage. That's the sort of act that was kind of in between because she absolutely packed out. I was kind of st- st- floating around uh, Liam Gallagher and she absolutely packed out that Festival Public stage and you couldn't get in, you couldn't get a look in. Um, so she's one of an act that would be too big for main stage because she'd, been on, she'd be on at one or two. Uh, but is too big, I think, for the Festival Republic stage. So that's, you know, she's a perfect example of someone that falls in that grey area that R&L really need to kind of get a look at and mm. sort something out. And it's all about them as well, not wanting to promote. They want they want this big promotion of no clashes. And as soon as you start getting those slightly bigger artists that they want to push and they put them on a second stage, like a smaller Radio 1 stage, then people are going to start getting up in arms that is like clashing because then they could just be like well why didn't you just put them on the main stage and then you know it it as much as it's really really cool and so innovative to have what six headliners 12 sub headliners it's a difficult difficult things but to kind of jigsaw everything else around it i agree yeah, I, sure. I just think they just need to drop an act or two from the main stage and just have a yeah, bigger gap start between the two later. Yeah. Just like have, like, and it's not a, a ten minutes. I'd love ten minutes to be between the two. It was whoever Sam Fender stops, Five. and then yeah. whoever starts. It was just straight. Yeah. One bat stopped, and then two doors then, started. It was immediate, yeah. Yeah. and it was like, yeah. oh, I'm old and yeah. pissed. You're, you're beer. Like, you know what I mean? It's when you, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's when you're walking over to to the next stage and you just see all the lights drop as you're walking you're like half a mile away like, oh, <laughs> you start, no. start sprinting over yeah <laughs> i'd be completely fine with having less acts on that stage that day like having yeah. five or six on each and having a good gap between them um but equally or have clashes during the day like mm. don't clash the headliners but during the day yeah. clash away i love a clash I love, I love a clash. All the dickheads yeah. that want to go see the shit band, they're there. So you just have all the cool people with <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, people are going to end up missing parts anyway because of the way they do it. So if you just had some clashes, then people would just do make the same decision. They're still going to think, oh, let me leave this five songs early. Yeah. And get over. Mm. Yeah. Um, it's, um, sure. it's an interesting one. It's, it's, it's a yeah. bit weird. But yeah, I think yeah, that's the biggest thing here is like, having a radio one stage or a bigger tent for bands like hybrid minds or pale waves or denzel denzel obviously can play the the, the main stage and in its new in its new kind of capacity makes even more sense but i, I do think there's something there which just catches and oh that's a cool place to go see the up-and-coming people but hey, that's me for sure about booking a festival 
I'll just give it a <laughs> ten. Yeah, exactly. And um, that sort of rounds up our whole dissection of the Reading lineup. What it is so far, we're gonna have good luck doing that when we've got 150 artists. But um, yeah, it's been. Oh, absolute pleasure, chaps, and I really appreciate once again Jack for coming on and helping us out with this uh, podcast episode. If you're not aware of Jack's channel already, like you aren't, um, head over there. He does a huge dissection, similar to what we do, but even further into every single artist at Reading and Leeds, and basically every artist that's been there for the last couple of years. So check out Jack Webb Music Club over on YouTube. There we go. I don't have done it. I'll follow that up, can I? Uh, I'm not doing every artist this year, though. It's going to kill me. Um, but we, we, Just do the ones you like. Yeah. This uh, well, this year I'm going to try and I'm, I'm, going to, I'm doing Glastonbury as well. So there's going to be some fun, diverse bits there. To being able to cover yeah, cool. some bobs. Uh, I've just finished writing Billy Eilish episode, which is going to be cool. Um, and then I'm also attending a festival in Australia, so I'm going to cover some of that as well. So yeah, well, fun things to come this year. Yeah, certainly. And an extended thank you as well, because uh, obviously the time difference does make it slightly difficult. Um, <laughs> if people don't know, Jack currently is in Australia. So <laughs> I've survived he is... and I'm currently uh, currently overlooking the Brisbane skyline and it's very hot. He is up early. <laughs> we're up late and we're <laughs> and we're filming this so you guys can see it. Thank you so yes. much for, for coming on, Jack. Uh, no, it's an absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure. And yeah, and I'm sure, that, again, this won't be the last time we do some stuff together and chat all things festival. So, um, again, thank you very much, and thank you all for listening to our sort of ramble about music. But, um, yeah, it's good to be back, and uh, thank you to you both for joining. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys. Cheers. See you later. <laughs>